Uh, for many of you who don't know, my name is Liz Garcia. I'm a founder of the Mind Body Spirit Network, and I'm the founder of this online meetup group. And it's a weekly online group that comes together for business networking, collaboration, and learning all about how to market holistic health practices. Many people here are in the mind, body, spirit realm, transformational healing realm, and they need help with their online marketing, which is what I'm kind of savvy at. In addition to, I'm, I understand you guys, I get you. <laughs> I am a healer myself. I've gone through a lot of uh, healing on my own and do a lot of consciousness work. So we come together every week for this. And part of the weekly um, schedule is we bring in people from that are members of the Mind, Body, Spirit Network that have really valuable gifts and all of my members do. <laughs> I'm like, I call them in. I'm like, bring me the good ones. <laughs> I get them. <laughs> so today, Holly Scalmonini is our guest uh, speaker and she is a member of the Mind, Body, Spirit Network. And let me just tell you a little background uh, information about Holly. She is a certified medical intuitive and a licensed acupuncturist. And Holly's career in the healing arts began in 1994, and she's been giving intuitive readings centered around health since 2010. Holly's readings focus on understanding root causes of illness, looking at emotional and behavioral patterns that contribute to illness, and looking at past lives and how they shape our life today, including our health. Holly's intention in giving an intuitive reading is to bring clarity, insight, and direction into your being both light and dark, and to give you the tools to move forward in health and in life. Holly, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. It's really wonderful to see all of you, um, a lot of familiar faces, and uh, my heart's just really full seeing all of you, and so I'm excited to, um, to be with all of you this morning. Um, so just quickly to talk to speak to Liz's question Liz earlier asked the question of you know do do we know what a medical intuitive or what medical medium is and I just want to speak to that question quickly um, so Carolyn Mace in the 80s uh, Rita was talking about her she uh, was working with a doctor named Norm Shealy and she's the person who coined the term medical intuitive Anthony William wrote a book several years ago, and he's the one who term, coined the term medical medium. And I, you know, it, everyone has their different flavor. Each healer, each psychic has their different flavor. And um, because I have a background as an acupuncturist, my intuition and my view tends to be rooted in um, Chinese medicine and the principles of balancing the human body through uh, the balancing of qi. Um, and so hopefully that that's just a little bit of uh, information around me and what I do and um, a little bit about what it means to be a medical intuitive. Um, but my talk today is about MAP. So MAP is a book. MAP is MAP stands for Medical Assistance Program. And um, I just want to say before I get started that um, if you're interested in using MAP, um, it's important that you buy the book and read the book. That this talk today isn't enough. It's not enough for you to get started using MAP. But what my intention is with this is to kind of give you a helping hand or a guide. Um, in understanding how to use MAP. Um, I've recommended this book often through the years, and I often get feedback that it is a little intimidating to start with. And like um, Jerry said, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the White Brotherhood here in a moment because that name alone is off-putting. Um, and so, but, so my intention today is to help explain this really, I think, really profound and amazing tool that was brought into being by Michelle Smallwright, who wrote this book, and um, just give you some guide points to begin using this tool. I think that um, as we move into the Aquarian era, so we're in a place where we're moving from Pisces into Aquarius, and uh, Pisces is aligned with three-dimensional. Aquarius is aligned with four-dimensional. And so in Aquarius, 
the be ability to to perceive beyond the five senses is um, I think growing for all of us, and that's part of why we are all beginning to have these sort of awakenings of feeling um, intuition, feeling psychic sense, having knowing about something, and so I think that this book is. It's aligned with that Aquarian dynamic, and it's, um, it is definitely moving us into that phase of being able to perceive beyond the five senses. Um, so map, what is map? Let me just tell you a little bit. Let me define what map is. So map is, again, it stands for Medical Assistance Program. And what map is, is it's a guidebook to help us connect with highly evolved souls on the other side who have medical training. And when we connect to them, they come in and they work on us, they help balance us. So essentially our human body is of nature. Our, our physical body came from the earth. And I don't think we often think about that, but it came from the earth. We came from the earth. And so being in nature is very balancing for us. And I think we probably all had times where we go for a hike or we're out deep in nature and we feel this deep sense of calm, this deep sense of peace within us. And through that deep sense of calm and peace, we feel a reset. We we're able to reset our bodies physically. And you know, over the last hundred years or so, we as humans really no longer live in nature. I think that the statistic um, is that in 1900, in the United States, 90% of US citizens lived in a rural area, and now it's the opposite. It's 10% live in a rural area, and 90% live in suburban and urban areas. And so our ability to really get deep into nature and to have that experience of of um, really feeling that connection to nature and that connection to that deeper part of ourselves um, has essentially been wiped away. And so MAP is a way to create that sense of balance. It's a way to create um, a connection to nature and also to these highly evolved souls that help us create balance within ourselves. Um, so, I, I want to just talk a little bit about the White Brotherhood. So you guys can see, and this is showing up backwards. I hope you guys can read this. No, showing up right? Okay, good. So um, the White Brotherhood. So it says here, Matt, the co-creative White Brotherhood Medical Assistance Program. So um, I was really lucky to get introduced to Matt. By the way, I've been using Matt for about 20 years. Um, I was introduced to it by my mom. I'm really lucky to have a mom who is um, into a lot of this stuff. And so she introduced me to MAP 20 years ago. And it was a time um, when she and I both were going through a lot. My stepdad had just passed away. Um, he was only 55. It was just a very um, vulnerable time for both of us. And she was introduced to MAP and she introduced MAP to me. And, and I remember when I looked at this, I was like, white brotherhood, mom, what have you got yourself into? This is but um, so don't let the name be off-putting to you. The, the name um, was actually coined about 500 years ago. And the White Brotherhood is a highly evolved group of souls that are very involved in the evolution of humans on this planet and also the care of our planet, the, the um, care of us on this planet. Um, Many high religious order figures come from, they incarnate from the White Brotherhood. And I think, Liz, it was you that told me that um, Martin Luther King Jr. and Gandhi are members of the White Brotherhood. And so um, souls that incarnate that bring a lot of healing and a lot of social change to our planet. This is the White Brotherhood. And um, Michelle actually, in the book, she has, she talks about the White Brotherhood and talks about how that, that term when it was coined a long time ago, it meant something different than what it means today. And essentially what it means is white is, I wrote it down, white meaning all the rays of the light spectrum. So when you think about the white light refracted, you get the rainbow. 
And so this is really what white is referring to. And then brotherhood is the family of all sentient beings. It's not necessarily masculine. It's, it's has to do with the family of all sentient beings. And so, um, she also has a little thing in there is, you know, if you're working with MAP and you would prefer not to use the term white brotherhood, she says, you know, just talk to them about that and come up with a name that feels good to you. Um, you know, you could say, I want to call you guys the purple sisterhood and that's fine. Um, it's just that the white brotherhood is, you know, it's just their name and that's what they're called. And so just to dispel some of the myth, some of the um, charge around that, that word that means something different today than it did a long time ago. Um, so let me speak a little bit about, about Michelle Small Wright. So um, her name is actually pronounced Michelle, even though it, it's spelled a little bit differently. So Michelle Small Wright is the author of this book, and she is who brought MAP into being. And um, she has a website, and Liz, I don't, maybe we can, um, I'd like to be able to put her website, I meant to talk to you this, about this earlier, I'd love so that people can buy this book from her website. Um, I don't know if there's a way to do that in the chat box. It's um, paralandra-ltd.com. Um, I'll make sure that that's available to everybody. Uh, but you can buy this book and find out more about Michelle and her other books and other things that she has um, on her website. Um, and it's important that you guys are able to find this book. So I think it's also available on Amazon. If you just Google it, um, it'll show right up. So Michelle uh, did some work with Findhorn back in the 70s. And I don't know if people are familiar with Findhorn, but Findhorn was um, this neat experimental project in Scotland in the 70s where, you know, Scotland is very rough terrain. It's very windy. Thank you, Liz. There's the website, everybody, in the chat box um, so that you can be sure to, that's how you can find the book and find more information about uh, Michelle Smallwright. So Finhorn, um, what they did at Finhorn is they uh, grew things in an area where things weren't supposed to be able to grow. And um, they did that in conjunction with nature intelligence. So they connected to nature spirits, they connected to the devas of the garden, they asked questions of the nature spirits, they said, where should we plant these things? So they worked co-creatively with nature in order to create this garden. And from what I understand, they were able to grow like bananas and pineapples and all kinds of things in this sort of sandy rough environment that never should have been able to grow. Um, but because they were doing it with this, this connection with MAP, I'm sorry, with, with um, nature spirits. Um, it was successful. So uh, Michelle started her own garden in Virginia called Paralandra, and same thing. So she's connecting to the nature spirits and the devas of the garden and doing this co-creative uh, co -creative garden, which is really beautiful. And as she was doing this, she was aware of the white brotherhood being around she was aware that they were around um and she didn't feel like she needed to engage with them she kind of felt like they know what they're doing and i know what i'm doing and um so fast forward a few years she had some health issues and she was having a tough time resolving those health issues and so she reached out to the white brotherhood and said hey can you guys help me and so she was connected with Lore Purris, who is the uh, head of the White Brotherhood Medical Unit. And Lore Purris said, let's do a session. And so they did a session, and that was essentially the beginning of MAP. And it was so successful for her, her health issues resolved, that she wanted to, um, oh, look, and somebody says, Finthorn is still there and thriving. And so um, somebody said, you know, or, the, the uh, Lord Purus said, um, and you know, Lord Purus said, let's create this for everybody else. Let's, let's make this available to everybody else. And so even though the, the premise of this can feel a little bit out there, I think that the main block is, is trust and, and feeling a sense of trust around what you're doing because there's nobody saying, yes, this is right or wrong. Um, I think this can be a really powerful tool. Um, so I think this might be a good place to stop and, and um, 
see if anybody has any questions so far. I think from now I'm gonna, right now I'm gonna actually just jump into how to use MAP and how to connect to MAP, but does anybody have any questions about the history of MAP or Michelle Smallwright or anything like that? Yes? I just wanna make one comment, Holly, uh, because it's, yeah. I always talk about the MAP of consciousness when I, um, when I have the opportunity to, and Dr. Hawkins, who is the brilliant mind behind creating, you know, studying consciousness, calibrated the level of the white brotherhood. Uh, and Hawkins is like, you no. froze on my screen. Oh, I don't know if anybody else is. No. Okay, I'm going to keep talking. You're that. Okay. Is anybody... Can you hear me? Yeah, everyone else, others can hear me. So I'm just going to say real quick. So, okay, Hawkins is um, always warns you, you don't want to engage in any type of teaching that's of lower consciousness. And he calibrated the white brotherhood at a very high level of consciousness at 540 and above, which is the level of unconditional love. So uh, you can feel safe with this book. <laughs> Holly? All right, does anyone here, well, while we're waiting for Holly, has anyone here read MAP? or engaged in it? Yes, I have. Oh, okay, Rita. Yeah. What's been your, what's your experience with MAP? Well, um, it was very helpful at um, the time I ran across it. And it was one of those things. <clears throat> yes, help. Um, put it back on the shelf. And when it's necessary again, it will come out and so this is interesting that Holly is bringing this forward today. Yeah. And did you find it, you know, someone else found it a little challenging to read. Did you find that as well or? No, I, I didn't. Oh, okay. Because um, I think I was, um, there, there were two or three of us who were um, delving into it here in Carbondale. And I can't even remember how many years ago it was, but um, I remember we did have some good discussions and um, a, a good sense of, yes, this is an appropriate tool. Oh, okay, good. Okay, I just got a text from Holly. She's trying to reconnect, so we'll stay tuned. Linda, so it's, I, you said you have the book on your shelf. Uh, I'm not sure if I do. I know it was suggested for my husband to get it and I think he was into it because I know he was looking up all of those things that Holly was just talking about. Oh. My attention there so I didn't find out for myself yet but now I can't wait to go home and see if I have it <laughs> I know right uh, and someone's asking are there guides who work with map what do you mean by that Lynn you can speak because we're waiting for Holly um so uh, I guess I just mean folks to help facilitate working with uh the white brotherhood for healing and that sort of thing like so are there guides who help people who haven't like maybe read all of that and done all that. You mean physical guides or non-physical yes, guides? Yes, no, physical. physical. Uh, I'm not physical. I meant okay. people. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. I think, I think, well, Holly uses it as a guide with, with if, when she, you know, is treating everybody as an acupuncturist or as an intuitive and she uses it for herself as a guide as well. So, um, but we can ask her when she, I don't know why she can't get back in. We'll hold on. Uh, okay. So Jerry had to go. That's fine. Bye, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. Let's see if she shows up here. I have a question, Liz. Yes. Can you tell us, you mentioned um, Gandhi and someone else to be of that high vibration? Who Martin was? Luther King. Oh, Martin Luther King. Wow. Thank In you. In fact, you know who mentioned it was Billy Fingers. Do you remember that, Cheryl? When he's talking about the afterlife and he's like, oh, there's, so, so you all know, there's a book called The Afterlife of Billy Fingers and it's incredibly healing and it was incredibly healing for me. And it's a true story about this uh, gentleman who was, uh, oh, okay, anyway, so The Afterlife of Billy Fingers is a true story about this gentleman who was a heartache to his family his whole life because he was a drug addict. And, um, and if you guys have people in your life that give you heartache, this was a great story to read. So 
he does, he gets hit by a car running out of a rehab clinic in his 60s. And his sister, who's in New York, who's a former psychotherapist, I believe, she was retired or changing her career. You know, was, everyone in the family was uh, heartbroken by his passing, but, you know, he was troubled. So he dies, and then he comes back and starts to talk to his sister. And she's like, am I going nuts? You know, she's like, uh, really? <laughs> So throughout the beginning of the book, he's like, I'm here, and he's, he's planting seeds of synchronicity. He goes, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, this is going to happen. So we can, she can start feeling okay about she's not going nuts, and that he really does continue to exist. So Billy Fingers is just describing the afterlife and what's going on as he kind of progresses, what's happening in the afterlife for him. And it's really fascinating to read. A part of it, and he's really kind of on his own, which is not to say that you will be. This is his own journey, and he talks about it. But, uh, you know, some people say they want to go to heaven, they want to see everyone they ever knew, and that exists. He's like, that exists. It's just not, not something I needed. So he's passing through the universe, becoming the universe is what he's calling it. I'm expanding into the universe. I'm becoming the universe. And that may sound weird, but... In the night, I think it was the early 90s, I had a kind of a, a knowingness about myself before any of this ever came into my awareness that I'm not of this world, I'm celestial in nature. That's what I felt. I'm like, I, I feel like I am among the stars type of being. That's what I felt. And I thought it was nutty, but I'm like, well, but I couldn't, I couldn't deny it because I felt it so strongly. I'm like, where would that come from? I wasn't making it up. So Billy Fingers describes the experience I was aware of I'm in the universe. So in any event, as he's becoming the universe, he passes by these like soul groups. Like he, he calls them, oh, they're evolved beings. I can just tell they're evolved beings. He doesn't get involved with them and talk about it too much. He's like, oh, I think they're of higher, higher consciousness than I am. So he goes, he passes by something called the White Brotherhood. And he has an awareness of it. He goes, oh, it's the White Brotherhood. And he says, Gandhi and Martin Luther King, I think they're of that group. So that's how that came into my awareness. And I don't know if, it, if anyone else has ever heard of it outside of that book, but um, it's no wonder 540 on the map of consciousness is huge. We know most of us, none of us, it's a very small percentage of the planet that operates from that level of consciousness, like half a percent of the planet is of that high consciousness. So um, we need help here because most of our planet is of lower consciousness, which is okay. You know, it's, it is what there is. Oh, Ollie says she's almost there. Hold tight. <laughs> here we come. <laughs> anyway, The Afterlife of Billy Fingers. Love the book. John Mason, rec he, he, I recommend it to him. He's like, he buys a copy for everybody now because he loves it so much. And his wife has passed, someone he really loved, passed um, like eight years ago. And I know if you have someone that's passed, it's super healing to read that. And one of the biggest takeaways of that is you cannot, when you read the book, you realize you cannot judge anybody at all. You cannot judge the path of anybody. You know, he came here to be a drug addict. <laughs> Hold on, here's Holly. No one wants us to know good stuff. You know, some of the darkness is like, you know, you guys don't need to be happy and know these things. <laughs> All right, I'm just kidding about that. Ignore that comment. Uh, anyone else want to chime in about anything? <laughs> oh, Glory, please do. Um, to pin it off what Rita said earlier, when I lived in Illinois, I did an event with Carolyn Mace at the Civic Center in Chicago, and then I did it with... Mona Lisa Schultz in Highland Park, and they both had positive things to say about the book map. So oh, those, nice. Those two oh. endorsements alone should be to remove any qualms anybody might have. Thank you, Lori. That's good to know. I don't think Carolyn Mace even does much of the medical intuitive side anymore. Do you know, Lori? Correct. She does not. She's, she's almost exclusive. She doesn't, her practice, uh, was private and then it's closed and she almost exclusively talks and writes period yeah cool all right holly's back <laughs> i'm really sorry you guys no worries honey <laughs> so sorry i 
I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Okay. All right. You guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, but you can't see me. You just hear me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm really sorry, you guys. I'm really sorry. Um, okay, so hopefully everybody can, um, hopefully I can quickly go over where I was. What, I, what I'd like to do is just go over um, MAP and how to use MAP, give a step-by-step -step overview of MAP. So um, essentially when using MAP, uh, you connect to four different entities. So what you do is you open what they call a coning, and I'm gonna define a coning um, here in a minute, but what you do is you open a coning, and in opening that coning, you open to four different entities. So first, you open a connection to the overlighting deva of healing. You then open a connection to Pan. You then open a connection to your map team and you then open a connection to your higher self. Again, this is in the book. This, she really outlines this very well in the book. It's step by step. But this is how you connect to um, a map team. And just a little bit of background, the Overlighting Deva of Healing and Pan are, um, are, they are connecting to nature. You're connecting to nature with those two. And then you connect to your medical, your, your map team, and that's the souls on the other side. So in a coning, uh, Michelle Smallwright defines a coning as a vert vortex of energy that includes nature intelligence, your medical team, and you. In this vortex, nature is able to stabilize us on all four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, with the brotherhood. So essentially, the coning is a vortex of energy nature, so opening to the overlighting Deva of healing and to pan, that helps uh, ground the session essentially so that we can be um, more connected than to the White Brotherhood medical unit and your own MAP team. Once you open those four connections, you talk. You talk with your MAP team. Just like you're talking with a doctor or a friend, and just a real quick aside, um, MAP should be used in conjunction with your MAP, with, with your medical team. So um, this is not to be used in place of um, a doctor or a healer. This can be used in combination with them. Um, <clears throat> so you would talk to them just like you would. You would say, I have a pain in my side. Um, it's worse after I eat. Um, it's worse after I eat fatty foods. Um, I think it might be my gallbladder. Um, you can tell them that, you know, different symptoms, you're essentially giving them feedback. And then they work on you for about 40 minutes. By the way, um, you do this while you're lying down and relaxed. And uh, Michelle Smallwright recommends that you try to stay awake through the session. Although, honestly, for me, I most always fall asleep. And they say for people who have active minds that the coning, they tend to kind of push you to sleep so that you're not interfering, which I probably do. Um, but so I think it's okay to go to sleep, but you want to be giving them feedback and then you can uh, talk about what you're feeling. You can say, I feel heat in that area. Um, I feel um, a, a sensation down my leg. I feel, um, tingling in my head. You want to give them feedback and then that helps the, the um, session continue to go. And um, so that feedback is, is very good. So essentially in working with MAP and doing conings, this is a lot about moving forward in life. It's a lot about expansion. Michelle Smallwright calls it expansion. I would call it moving forward. It's about helping people to, helping everyone to move forward, expand in your own growth. One of the things that she talks about is that MAP never supersedes your own timeline. So if you are ready for expansion, if you're ready for growth, MAP can assist you with that. But MAP would never put that on you. Map, your MAP team would never push you into growing beyond where you're ready to grow. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, 
So this is really working on physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels. So again, it's the four dimensional, working on all four dimensions as opposed to the three dimensional in the Piscean era. So in the Aquarian dynamic, this is really working and looking at health issues on all four levels and really with the premise that once all four levels are addressed, um, clarity can happen, healing can happen. Um, yeah. So I noticed that someone just put up a question. How does that differ from connecting to your spirit guides? That's from Claire. And Claire, thank you for that question. It's a great question. And um, I think that the way that that differs is that the White Brotherhood Medical Unit is a specific group. So when you connect to MAP and when you connect, when you open those four connections that I just talked about, you're opening a connection to a specific group of souls that have medical training that are here to work on you. And what I've noticed is I feel that they actually communicate with my spirit guides. So I would define my spirit guides as souls that are with me all the time, that are helping me all the time, that are more connected to me personally. Whereas I think the medical unit is they go around almost like a doctor. They make house calls kind of, and they come around and talk with you. Um, but I actually feel that sometimes they actually connect with my spirit guides and th there's a connection there and a relationship there. So does that, does that answer your question? And Rita posted here that it's very important that MAP is used in conjunction with conventional care. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. I think trying to um, use MAP on its own it is, um, I think it's foolhardy, honestly. I, I think it's important to have input from trained professionals um, around health issues. And um, so Lynn is asking a question. She says, so is there more to the White Brotherhood than just the medical unit known as MAP? Is that accurate? And the answer is absolutely yes. There's actually a lot out there. If you do a little bit of research, if you Google White Brotherhood, and um, there's a lot of research. You can, you can do a lot of research out there. Michelle talks about them um, quite a bit in her book as well. And one of the things that she says is that, again, all um, a lot of the heads of religious orders, people who bring about great social change, like Martin Luther King Jr., like Gandhi, they are members of the White Brotherhood. So I think that the White Brotherhood is very big. That's what it seems like to me. And that MAP is just one unit, one section of that, of that White Brotherhood. So thanks for the great questions, you guys. And again, I really wish I could be seeing you right now. I'm sorry, it's just my voice. Um, and Liz, it is nine. Should I keep going or? Um, uh, why don't we just do, well, we do have a book review at 10.15, so maybe just 10 more minutes, Holly, so that we um, okay. can take a break and I can stay on track with that. Okay, um, so the, my next section, I actually wanted to do a demonstration about kinesiology. Do you think it would be okay for me to try my video? Sure. Or but do you think it might? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't risk it. Um, well, so first actually, of all, there, many people here may be aware of, can you, were you just going to show how the technique is done? Yeah, she explains it. Actually, yeah, if there's, um, if everyone maybe could weigh in, maybe I don't need to do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so kinesiology, she, and again, she goes over that in the book, but there is, um, she shows a specific way to do, to use kinesiology, to use muscle testing, um, to connect and talk with your MAP team so that you can receive feedback from your MAP team. You can ask, you, you frame the, the questions in yes, no. Uh, so you could say, um, should I change my diet? Yes. Should I eat less uh, fish? Yes. Um, that kind of thing. Excuse me. Um, well, I thought it was more of a statement, Holly. Like, I should eat more fish, yes or no. Well, Hawkins always places it as a statement as opposed to a question. Does she do... That she, not, she, Michelle, I, I think it depends on your own personal style. I would imagine um, either way. And, and she recommends just, her recommendation is framing in a yes, no question. Okay. Now, does so, she use like the O-ring this way to test or a different um, It's similar to that, but different. Similar okay. to that. So um, Linda is asking, does she use her fingers to test with? And the answer is yes. And um, yeah, and I'm, I just am afraid I'm going to drop off again if I use that video. Um, 
Well, Linda, so, Linda, can you show us uh, how to use the hands for testing? You've done that before? Uh, you're on mute. Well, I know how I do it. I was curious to see what, what Holly was going to say. Oh, OK. But yeah, so I do it either with two, two loops. One's hold tight, and one is the pull through. So it would be a yes, is, it stays tight, and a no, you can pull through. There's also the circle with like your pry bar fingers. Yes, no, right? And that's the second, the second one is what Michelle Small Wright recommends, but I don't think it matters. I, th I think it's whatever you're comfortable with. It's, it, what, it's what feels comfortable to you. That's the main thing. I think um, one of the, the issues with kinesiology is that people get into a place of doubt. They don't, they doubt. Um, I do too, you know, is that right? What am I actually testing? And um, so, uh, but yeah, thank you, Linda. Thanks for that. That's, that's what she, that's what she talks about. So yeah. Thanks, Linda. Um, and just quickly, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is her flower essences. So she, um, she has a whole line of flower essences that I feel are very important, very, a really beautiful complement to working with MAP. And um, in her third edition book, her more recent book, she recommends one particular formula called ETS Plus and you just use that one formula. Prior to that, in her first and second editions, um, she had a whole, she had you do testing with rose essences, garden essences, um, so there were several boxes of essences, like, uh, I wish I could show you, I have them here, but, um, you know, so you're testing about a dozen different essences. And so the ETS Plus makes it a lot more simple, but I actually really enjoy doing the, um, several essences, the rose essences in particular work on the craniosacral system. And I just, I, I find a lot of benefit from that. And um, so I just, I highly recommend the flower essences and those are also on her website and you can, you can check into those. So, yeah. So, so Holly, Paralander oils is the name of her oils, right? Par Paralander? No, she doesn't do, she doesn't do oils. She does flower essences. I'm sorry, flower essences. Because yeah, I, that's the I name. know I recognize, I recognize that name. Yeah, yeah. So those are her flower essences. Yeah. Okay. Because I have come across other healers that, that use her stuff as opposed to Bach flower. Yeah. So Bach flower is the other one. And those are um, a little more readily available in grocery or uh, natural uh, grocery stores and things like that. But you can get her flower essences from her. And they are made on her property from her um, really divine garden. And um, I just, I've, I've had some really lovely opening experiences with the flower essences and I do feel like they're very stabilizing and helpful in the expansion work and in the healing work that is um, created by doing MAP. Nice. With MAP. So, so did you have more you wanted to add to that, Holly, or? That's really it. Um, okay. I, I've kind of speeded it up a little bit. I, I, um, yeah, that's really it. That's, that's what I, that's my talk. Okay. So. so we were having a little conversation while you were offline and it had to do with, um, you know, the, the expansion work that many of us are going through. And I tend to be very young about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I force expansion, which doesn't, it's not helpful. It's a cra yeah. I crash, which is stinks. And I found, um, I'll get back to what Hawkins was saying about it, but I found working with box or any type of flower essences takes the edge off. Yeah. If you know you've got, you know, grief and sorrow or depression or whatever that may come up really hard on you, I always, you know, my sister reminds me, she's the one who tests for me. She's like, get the, box, get the flower essences. It totally takes the edge off that expansion work of letting go of negativity. So I, I agree. And I, you know, I think different, different substances work on different levels. I think that, you know, like herbs, my Chinese herbs, they, they really adjust the physical being. I think that flower essences work more on the energy body. They work more on the spiritual level. Ah. And I think that, so when you're in that space of feeling that expansion on a spiritual level, um, I, I think the flower essences are really a, a really helpful piece. Okay, that's good to know. So what was the physical one that you use? 
Chinese herbs? Well, I just I think that different substances, so um, different supplements and different things work on different levels. So um, I think aromatherapy works on the emotional level, you know, um, working with scent, yeah. you know, scent helps emotion. And so aromatherapy helps move emotions through us. I think herbs, um, my Chinese herbs I was talking about, or any kind of herb, herbs work more on the physical level. They actually adjust the blood. They adjust the internal organs. They adjust the um, deficiency or excess. They're working more on the physical level. Um, and I think that flower essences work more on the spiritual level. When there's a soul, when, it's, when the root of what's happening within you is more on a soul component, on a very deep level, flower essences are very helpful. Gee, I've never had that spelled out to me before, Holly. That's a good one to know. Yeah, yeah. I think that, yeah, different, you know, again, looking at it from that fourth dimensional aspect and what addresses each dimension. And really, I think one of the things that I like to do in my readings is understand where, you know, what level is this rooted in? Is this illness rooted in? Is it rooted more in a physical level, emotional level, mental level, or spiritual level? And then from there, once you have that sense of it, then you can look at, okay, I think flower essences would be helpful. Aromatherapy, okay. that kind of a thing. So is anyone here I'd like to talk, ask Holly questions about like a reading with her, what, what the process would look like? Or is anyone here that has that type of question? I would We'd like to welcome that. And, um, and then Holly, if you want to invite people in for you know, what you do, now would be a good time as well. Okay, so Linda is saying, I'd love to know how a session goes. So um, you know, in a reading with me, um, in a reading with me, so different medical intuitives are different. And my style, again, is very rooted in my knowledge of Chinese medicine and looking at the, the human body and the energy body from the perspective of qi, the flow of qi, the meridians, and the Chinese medicine five elements. And so um, generally when I connect with someone, I'm able to pick up very quickly what their element is. What, so in Chinese medicine, there's five elements, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. And so I'm generally able to pick up from them um, their element and then help me understand them and what their tendencies are towards um, health. I also, even though I'm not an Ayurvedic practitioner and um, I don't claim to be an Ayurvedic practitioner, that's an entirely different medical degree, but for some reason, I, I used to teach yoga. I do have some knowledge around that. I'm also easily able to see people's uh, body type in Ayurveda. So whether they're kapha, pitta, or vata, or a combination. And so those things are helpful for me in understanding people and really seeing their, their constitution and who they are at their core. And then generally, often what comes up at next is either emotion or um, behavioral patterns or life situations that are contributing to the illness. So unlike Anthony William and Carolyn Mace, I generally don't get the physical illness right away. I get the emotional and behavioral patterns right away. Um, and, and I can mess with that a little bit. If I, if I choose to look more at the physical body, that'll tend to come up. But I think because I am more interested in that, I'm more interested in the emotional component, the behavioral patterns, the life situations that contribute. That's generally what comes up quickly for me. And from there, um, we look into how do we work with that, how giving clarity as to where those come from, um, how they're manifesting now, and how you move forward with those um, issues. One of the things that I really am very fascinated with is past lives. I often find that past lives, when I look at past lives, that there's a relationship between past lives and what's happening um, currently within health and life situations, behavioral patterns. Um, and so I like to look at past lives as well. Um, because of my Chinese background, med medical background, I, I do feel that I have a really good sense of the physical body. And so my ability to look at the flow of energy, um, the quality of health in different organ systems, um, the nervous system, the circulatory system, the musculoskeletal system, um, I feel like I have a good sense of being able to look at those and look at uh, how those um, 
the health and, and those kinds of things. Um, I also love to look at diet, look at supplements, look at, you know, things that are working, things that may not work. Um, those tend to come up clearly in the readings. So, um, you know, essentially, I, I always love to give a lot of direction in my readings too. Here's what you do next. Here's a book. Here's try this. Um, I think that it's really important to give a lot of direction, um, prescriptions, if you will. Here's your prescription um, for, for this. So that's, that's what it's like in a reading. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> well, if, yeah. if, if we have any other, does anyone have any other questions? If not... Well, I need to cut it off because we have another thing scheduled here in a few minutes. Holly, thank you so much. Bummer about the internet. Yeah, I, I'm so, again, really, I'm very sorry, you guys. I, 